Nostradamus returns to reign on our collective parades from over 400 years ago. Nostradamus predicted Queen Elizabeth would die. Nostradamus is actually what we're talking about. You know Nostradamus. With the death of Queen Elizabeth, the Pope's abdication, the age of the Antichrist, the terrifying rise of AI and nations becoming aggressive and bringing each other down, what is mentioned in the Bible is almost once again suggested. The accuracy of his predictions surprised the world. He is Nostradamus, the 16th century French astrologer. The Les Prophetie is said to be a secret book when recording Nostradamus's prophecies to this world. The more time passes, the more Nostradamus's prophecy is confirmed. And in the year 2024, what speculations did Nostradamus have about it? And is there anything that is gradually coming true? Join us in this video with us to discover the mysteries behind these chaotic 2024 predictions. Are Nostradamus's predictions being true? Nostradamus was born in France in 1503. He first worked as a physician and began his medical practice in the 1530s, although he did so without a medical degree. He began making prophecies about 1547, and he published his prophecies in a book entitled Centuries. He wrote his prophecies in quatrains, four lines of rhyming verse. The quatrains were grouped in hundreds. Each set of 100 quatrains was called a century. Nostradamus's predictions tended to be about general types of events, like natural disasters and conflict-related events that tend to occur regularly as time goes on. Some people believe that his prophecies have predicted actual events, such as the death of Henry II, the French Revolution, the rise of Napoleon, the rise of Adolf Hitler. Others maintain that because his prophecies tend to be about general types of events that occur frequently throughout history and are written in a cryptic and vague manner, it's possible to find one that seems to match almost any event that has occurred. The predictions of Nostradamus can be as accurate or as lax as you want to believe. The prophecies of Nostradamus were written in an ancient form of the French language, worded metaphorically. So many people feel confused about the authenticity of this man's prophecy. However, most of Nostradamus' prophecies have come true and are showing signs of coming true. We will learn about prophecies that came true later in this video. Let's wait and see. Belief comes from each person. You have the right to choose your decision. And whether it is true or not, we can only wait for time to prove it. For now, let's see this man's predictions for 2024. The first prediction. The apparent disappearance of the Princess of Wales from public life has sparked a wave of conspiracy theories on the internet and even in some media outlets. She hasn't really disappeared, of course. Catherine went into hospital for abdominal surgery in January. At the time, Kensington Palace said she would be away from public life until after Easter. But that hasn't quelled conjecture, much of it downright malicious, as people become fascinated with what's happening behind the scenes. Claims of doppelgangers and reused Vogue photos have whipped many into a frenzy of cruel and groundless accusations against several members of the royal family. And the latest theory seemed to have been born in a prediction made almost 500 years ago. Related to royal family, the French astronomer, said to have predicted the death of Queen Elizabeth and predicted change for the royal family this year. Writing in 1555, he said the King of the Isles, who has been involved in an infamous divorce, will be driven out by force. He will then be replaced by one who will have no mark of a king. Many have taken that to be a sign that Charles will abdicate the crown and be replaced by Harry, not William. It came to prominence again when the king confirmed he was undergoing treatment for cancer. Royal watchers speculated that he would stand down, or be forced to stand down, to concentrate on his health. Quite how Harry ends up taking the throne, given his dislike of all things royal, has never been explained, but some fans reckon the apparent mystery of Kate's whereabouts is somehow linked. Not long ago, Kate spoke up to share that she is facing cancer and she is trying to face it in a positive way. This makes the people who follow the royal family become even more worried, confused, and scared. 
King Charles and Princess Kate are both facing cancer at the same time. Is the royal family in a period of chaos, and will the person who will replace King Charles's throne be his son? It's difficult to give an answer at this time. We need time to verify Nostradamus's prophecy. The Second Prediction In lay prophecy published from 1555, Nostradamus mentioned that in 2024 there will be a number of troubles happening globally, including increased conflicts, geopolitical problems, wars at sea, problems with the royal family, and a major humanitarian disaster. But the biggest worry that humanity faces in 2024 is likely to be nature when a series of climate disasters are predicted to occur and threaten human life. The dry earth will become drier and suddenly a great flood will come. This is a verse taken from the work Lay Prophetie, showing what Nostradamus predicted in 2024. To describe this verse, it can be understood that the already harsh climat situation will get worse. The French prophet predicts that extreme weather phenomena such as record heat, forest fires, droughts, storms, will increasingly occur with greater frequency and intensity. Global warming is a huge phenomenon going on in the modern day. The Bible does not specifically talk about climate change or global warming. However, the Bible does tell us the world will eventually be burned in fire, could be another way to understand how alarming the Earth's condition will gradually become. 2 Peter 3.10 informs us, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. God will one day erase this current universe and replace it with the new heavens and new earth. How much effort should be made saving a planet that God is eventually going to obliterate and replace with a planet so amazing and wonderful that the current earth pales in comparison? Nostradamus' prophecy also coincides with scientific warnings about climate change occurring in 2024. Accordingly, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration recently said there is a one-third chance that 2024 will be even hotter than 2023 and a 99% chance that 2024 will be among the five hottest years has been recorded. This is based on the fact that the world is being affected by climate change due to human burning of fossil fuels along with the El Nino climate pattern emerging in the second half of 2023. That combines with many natural factors has caused a series of harsh phenomena such as snowstorms in North America, volcanic eruptions in Iceland, dense fog, and cold waves causing temperatures to drop sharply in India. These cases show some of the harshness that the world is going through. The Third Prediction The French seer also added that 2024 will see a huge famine brought on by a wave of pestilence. First, we talk about the famine. If we put Nostradamus' prophecy next to what the Bible teaches, you will see the coincidence that they both mention femine. Back to the past, Israel occupied the rocky highlands of Canaan, the area of present-day Jerusalem and the hills to the north of it, rather than fertile coastal plains. Even in the best of years, it took enormous effort to coax sufficient sustenance out of the ground. The rainy seasons were brief, any precipitation less than normal could be devastating. Across the ancient Near East, drought and famine were feared. In the 13th century BC, nearly all of the Eastern Mediterranean civilizations collapsed because of a prolonged drought. In the book of Deuteronomy, God proclaims that if Israel obeys the laws, the Lord will open for you his bounteous store, the heavens, to provide rain for your land in season. Disobedience, however, will have the opposite effect. The skies above your head shall be copper, and the earth under you iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land dust, and sand shall drop on you from the sky until you are wiped out. To ancient Israelites, there was no such thing as nature as we understand it today, and no such thing as chance. If things were good, it was because God was happy. 
if things were going badly, it was because the deity was angry. For a national catastrophe like famine, the sin had to lie either with the entire people or with the monarchs who represented them, and it was the task of prophets and oracles to determine the cause of the divine wrath. Famine was seen as both punishment and opportunity. Suffering opened the door for repentance and change. For example, when the famously wise King Solomon inaugurates the temple in Jerusalem, he prays that God will be forgiving when, in the future, a famine-stricken Israel turns toward the newly built temple for mercy. In the book of Samuel, we read that Israel endured a three-year famine in the time of David, considered Israel's greatest king. When David inquires as to the cause of the famine, he is told that it is due to the sins of his predecessor and mortal enemy, Saul. For someone, famine was both an ending, the result of disobedience and sin, and also a beginning, a potential turning point toward a better, more faithful future. Second, many believe the wave of pestilence in Nostradamus's word widely believed to describe deadly earthquakes. Let's take a closer look at these verses. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Doubtless, somewhere people will again start to use such disasters as signs that we are living in the last days. Or, to put it more accurately, since the New Testament consistently insists the last days began with Christ's first coming, they will insist that we are living in the last days of the last days. But wait, Revelation depicts apocalyptic earthquakes during the tribulation itself of a greater magnitude than anything the world has ever seen. But the place in Scripture where people turn to make a link between ordinary earthquakes and the nearness of the end is Jesus' Olivet Discourse. Earthquakes and famines? These are mere the beginning of birth pangs. In other words, just as labor pains remind a pregnant mother that there is a baby inside her that the body wants to bring into the world, so do these various earthly disasters remind believers that Christ will return, ending human history as we now know it. The Fourth Prediction Next, we come to the postmodern Nostradamus prediction of the Space Age in the 30th century, after the Fourth Industrial Revolution. In a far remote area of Asia, a local social scientist driven by its natural instinct in the spirits of heaven beyond, by the sixth sense of human intelligence, decoded the social and technological predictions of the 30th century. Let's imagine the timeline of the Space Age discusses the stages of its technological, social and economic development in the 20th century to the 30th century along age of modern culture age of the novice space exploration age of commercial space aviation development age of peripheral space exploration age of outside peripheral space exploration and matured space age let's first talk about the age of modern culture this stage presents the societal modern life with the sustained commercial development of electronics, information technologies, and applications of other technological gadgets, the presence of evolving commercial technology packaged of computers, laptops, iPod, cell phones, with the combination of a satellite-powered enterprise of the internet, cable, and communication lines. It has active form of social interaction in the sustained development of the modern culture as a result of the technological development of the 21st century. Generally, the impact of the modern culture will continue to flourish even the entrant of the age of the novice space exploration as cultural adaptation imposes upon the certain technological trend in the 21st century. The hologram and technological satellite communications will continue to dominate in the commercial packaging of desktop computers, laptops, iPods, cell phones, and other technological gadgets. The next transition after the age of the novice space exploration is a continuation of the age of modern culture as part of the information and data generated from the five decades of space exploration 
from the Apollo 1960s to shuttle discovery exploration of NASA in the year 2012. Second, it's about the age of the novice space exploration. This stage generates an integrated support of the five decades of space exploration from Apollo spacecraft in the 1960s to the shuttle exploration of the 2012. It utilizes electronic and nuclear technology to benchmark the future spacecraft in a highly dangerous solar habitat. This will take off in the development commercial aviation to live and experience outer weightlessness in space and levels of the Earth atmosphere. It will begin the lucrative business of the early commercialization of space experience by the wealthy class of the society. The age of modern culture will continuously flourish in a wide range commercial information technology as converged its matured integration in the age of novice exploration. This will be used for the next five decades to validate and evaluate the peripheral Earth conditions of the solar system to enhance the protection of space passengers in 2020 to the timeline of 2100. It is important to include the age of the novice space exploration for the space forecast on whatever changes that will happen until 2100 within the range of the age of commercial space aviation development. It must be noted that the next stage in the prelude of the space age will still utilize whatever technological inventions and discoveries in the age of modern culture and age of novice space exploration. The baseline of value life experience has still in the age of modern culture, however. The cultural adjustment and adaptation will still follow the innovative transition of the technological gadgets, such as utilization of internet and satellite technologies for the commercial innovation of iPod, cell phones, laptop, cable TV, and more. Third is the age of commercial space aviation development, after the fourth industrial revolution. This stage will continuously explore a better quality assurance for space aviation industry in addressing the concern no longer an excitement of weightlessness, but a hindrance to further provide better experience and life support in the space travel. The timeline will take centuries to survive, as the transition phase of modern culture and commercial aviation remained matured and dormant to solve the gravitational weightlessness and life sustenance of food and oxygen in the space. The innovative technologies of the age of modern cultures will still carry on until the age of commercial space aviation development. As the exploratory process of the next three decades, from 2020 to 2050, will provide the quality assurance to entertain the space passengers of the actual experience of the weightlessness in space and beyond the atmosphere looking at the blue planet. This will be affordable only to the wealthy class and other high income bracket in the world to feel, live and experience in the space. In year 2200 to 2300, the global competition will remain high for the commercial space. Aviation as the age of modern cultures will transform the cultural adaptation as it will diffuse amalgamate and integrate space consciousness for the next generation on the gradual development of space age. At the 2300-2400, the commercial space aviation industry will redefine its quality space service in the promotion of the space habitat within the periphery of the Earth's surface after the boundaries of satellite flight within the range of Earth and Moon. This will spell the difference of the corporate world in the dominance of its powerhouse in the spacecraft and space capsule. The reinvention of space hotels, space capsule, spacecraft mall, and other space facilities will be habitable to the human society. Fourth, it's the age of peripheral space exploration. The result of commercial aviation of the space will transform to introduce the peripheral space life within the Earth distance on outer moon. The introduction of the space capsule and spacecraft as the main habitat support in highly hazard solar system will be developed for this stage. The Earth surface will redefine the modern cultures to space cultures as extracted to the phenomenal support of the space age after five centuries of development. The social and technological prediction will come on the advent of the invention and discovery into the development of simulated biological gravitation and life sustenance 
oxygen and food support of space capsule and spacecraft habitat forming. The commercialization will shift no longer in aviation development, but also the interplanetary exploration of International Space Corporation. The Earth surface will also redefine new sources of technological materials taken from the interplanetary exploration as the depletion of Earth resources in the Middle East and Asia. In year 2500, the commercial space aviation industry will mature as the space habitat as it will conduct the commercial space exploration. The international commercial enterprise and state enterprise will explore the solar system on its mineral and chemical resources to produce space facilities and equipment. The turn of the centuries on peripheral solar exploitation as space bases and habitat sustained the life structures in highly dangerous interplanetary system will continue to strive in this development stage. On the other hand, the human culture no longer be the same of its cultural adaptation as it will be highly different and defined by its consciousness in sustaining space age period. Fifth is the age of outside peripheral space exploration. The next centuries after the age of commercial aviation development of the space will boost the interplanetary exploration as the main gate of planetary life will continuously exist in the outside the solar system. By the end of the 2500, the space exploration will continuously expand to the outside the solar system as the earthly humans will be able to conduct an advanced tangible search beyond the galaxy and Milky Way of the universe. The timeline of the outside peripheral exploration outside the solar system will consumed in the next three centuries of development as human habitat will learn to live deep in space outside the solar system. By the end of the 2500, the space exploration will continuously expand to the outside the solar system as the earthly humans will be able to conduct an advanced tangible search beyond the galaxy and Milky Way of the universe. The timeline of the outside peripheral exploration outside the solar system will consumed in the next three, three centuries of development as human habitat will learn to live deep in space outside the solar system. The last one is the matured space age. The matured space age will be the prelude of age of peripheral and outside peripheral exploration as the humanity will be able to perfect the hazardous life in space and its interplanetary challenges in the solar system. It will be the 30th century when perfected the genuine space age. At the end of the 30th century, the peripheral life of the solar system and within the space realm of the galaxy and Milky Way of the universe will mature by the boundaries of interplanetary system. The human beings will be the space wanderers of the universe, searching life system of the universe. The timeline of the space age will be affected by many internal and external factors, whether human activities or natural events that will happen in the coming centuries. The transition of space ages will surely come as the social and technological predictions are within the objective bounds of human intelligence and the sixth sense of human life structures and processes. There will be changes of space age transitions, but the basics of its philosophical, social and technological development will also be there. The world will never be the same again as we grow older by the wonders of information technologies and space development from 2010-2050. However, this stages of transition on space age depends so much about our faith in God and the generational correctional of human species attitude of the adoration of material wealth. Let the world grasp the inner thought of this social and technological prediction in the past be the guiding post the development of sustained religion on its ethical and moral value to transcend the word wisdom of the Savior. I say, Amen. May God be with you forever as we live the exciting future of the space age. Nostradamus's shocking predictions came true. While logic might suggest Nostradamus's claims could apply to almost any event, some of them come eerily close to reality. In these cases, we couldn't ignore his speculative prowess, the death of Henry II. The young lion will overcome the older one on the field of combat in a single battle, 
He will pierce his eyes through a golden cage, two wounds made one, then he dies a cruel death. Henry II of France was a personal acquaintance of Nostradamus, who once addressed him in a letter as the most invincible Henry King of France. Unfortunately, Henry actually turned out to be very vincible indeed and came to a horribly painful end, aged just 40. A passionate sportsman fond of hunting and jousting, Henry's active nature proved his undoing when, in the summer of 1559, he held a tournament to celebrate a recent peace treaty. During a joust with one of his young soldiers, the latter's lance shattered, driving splinters into the king's eye and skull. A slow and painful death from sepsis followed, and many believe it was foretold by Nostradamus. The quatrain in question tells us, the young lion will overcome the older one, that he will pierce his eyes through a golden cage, and that two wounds will ensure a cruel death. Uncanny? Perhaps. Although critics have pointed out the quatrain also says the killing occurs on the field of combat in a single battle, while Henry was accidentally slain during a playful joust, the coming of Adolf Hitler. From the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. And beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. Into a cage of iron will the great one be drawn when the child of Germany observes nothing. Nostradamus has been credited with quite a few 20th century predictions and the rise of Adolf Hitler is often cited as one of them. And, to be fair, his writings do provoke a slight chill of recognition. From the depths of the west of Europe, Nostradamus wrote, a young child will be born of poor people. And what does this child do? He will by his tongue seduce a great troop, and his fame will spread far beyond Europe. Another quatrain of possible significance mentions fighting close by the Hister, which is either a loose reference to Hitler or a more mundane mention of the old name of the Danube River, depending on your point of view. The Kennedy assassination. The ancient task will be completed. From on high, evil will fall on he great man. A dead innocent will be accused of the deed. The guilty on will remain in the mist. The killing of President John F. Kennedy was one of the pivotal moments of the 20th century, so it's not surprising that many have scoured the works of Nostradamus for any hint of a prophecy. A commonly quoted contender is the bit that reads, From on high, evil will fall on the great man, perhaps a reference to the fact he was shot from a distance by a sniper or snipers. Tellingly, the quatrain continues with, A dead innocent will be accused of the deed, is this Lee Harvey Oswald, the suspected assassin who was himself shot dead soon after and has long been regarded as an innocent fall guy? As if that wasn't enough to convince us, Nostradamus assures us the true guilty party will remain in the mist. The atomic bomb. The heavenly dart with stretch its course. Death in the speaking, a great achievement. The proud nation brought low by the stone in the tree. Rumors of a monstrous human bring purge, then expiation. In August of 1945, the United States dropped two atomic bombs on the island nation of Japan, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Many historians argue the tragedy marked the end of World War II. Those who escaped immediate detonation suffered painful radiation poisoning, and many died. A stone in the tree, in Nostradamus Quatrain, could describe the shape of the mushroom cloud that engulfed the sky above the city. It could also mean a land-bound object, like a stone and a bomb, paradoxically appearing where it shouldn't. A tree or the sky. The French Revolution. Songs, chants, and demands will come from the enslaved, held captive by the nobility in their prisons. At a later date, brainless idiots, We'll take these as divine utterances. In 1789, the French people decided they'd had enough of aristocratic rule. 
they revolted, storming the Bastille, a Paris fortress used as a prison. The fall of the Bastille, which symbolized the monarchy's abuses, marked the height of the French Revolution. The peasants quickly took control of Paris and enforced their demands by kidnapping the royals. Some of them were even beheaded. The Great Fire of London. The blood of the just will commit a fault at London, burnt through lightning of 23's the six. The ancient lady will fall from her high place, several of the same sect will be killed. It's worth quoting the alleged Great Fire of London Quatrain in full, because it's one of the most mysterious prophecies of all. It's tantalizing if you interpret, as some do, 23's the six as 66, which means 20 multiple three, then plus six. Add to that the mention of London and references to deaths, and you can see why it's believed to be a prophecy of the Great Fire of London in 1666. As ever with Nostradamus, ambiguities make it hard to be definitive. The Great Fire was set off by a flame in a bakery, not by lightning, and what does the ancient lady signify? Perhaps London itself? This is one to puzzle over, even by Nostradamus's standards.